What's going on everybody? I'm Primal Liquid and welcome back to my 100% perfect playthrough for Crisis Core Reunion. Guys, we're on part number 6 right now. We've done all of the optional missions available. Well, apart from one. But that's perfectly fine. We're going to do that in the next chapter anyway. For now, we are going to go ahead and get Benora done. If you don't know, Benora is the uh, the actual story section in this chapter. And once we do that, we're going to unlock a whole bunch of new things to do. For now, though, we're actually going to change our equipment up a little bit. Why? Well... Simply down to the fact that we actually don't really need any of this stuff now, basically. So, what we're going to do is, I could do uh, extra Royal Crowns for, you know, more more damage. Or, I could throw on something like a Crystal Gloves, and also the uh, the Kazer Knuckles that I got earlier on from, um, from Magic Pot. Which is actually what I'm going to do. I'm actually just going to use two Kazer Knuckles. And the main reason for that, okay, the main the main reason for that is simply attacks are going to be faster for us coming up. It's like we are we are literally just going to use attacks in Benora because now with two Kazer Knuckles that takes us up to 100 attack. So now a single a single slash from us is pretty much going to kill basically everything like in Benora. It's like normal enemies will only have like a thousand health if that uh, bosses yeah, like, what, six to ten thousand, something like that. Really, really not a lot. Even if you were playing on hard mode, because of the gear and the materia that we have now from, you know, all the, all the missions, we're actually more than strong enough to get through pretty much the entire game right now. Like, we could, we could easily just hightail it straight through to, like, chapter eight, chapter nine, and face zero issues that's just how strong the electrocute and trifundiga combination actually is we're, we're literally not going to suffer on any any story mission now for a very very long time so it's just literally a case of uh rush through benora as quickly as we can there are going to be some mini games for us to do which are linked to trophies as well one of them Definitely gonna re uh, gonna require some saves coming if you are unlucky, but there are a couple of tricks you can do for one of the mini games to make it a little bit easier. But again, you can uh, you can save scum it just in case. But that's not gonna be until way later in the mission anyway. For now though, we just sort of have to go through Benora. We are gonna have a uh, a quick you know quick boss fight sort of early on, but then after that. It's basically just exploration. Like, it's just going to be exploration. Picking up a lot of items. And we will also have to uh, interact with some little live stream orbs. The live streams aren't going to really do anything for us than now. But it is related to a trophy later on. And it's also related to another minigame later on as well. We just have to interact with them now first. That's all. But we're not going to have to do that until we uh, until we do the first boss anyway. And then it's basically just, as I said, you know, like exploration. There's really, there's really not much to do in general in Benora. It's sort of, it's still sort of like a tutorial area, really. We're just going to completely ignore the mail as well. It's like we can we can check that later. It doesn't really bother us for now anyway and at least now with my my attacks that being so high we can easily crush all the mobs as well again you don't really have to do this i'm just doing it just because pretty much it's like they, they're gonna give like no exp for us at this point just because we've been doing you know some seven and eight star missions their item drops are absolutely terrible and obviously their guild rewards are really bad as well so, don't feel bad if you choose to skip them. I'm just running through because, eh, why not? They only take one hit to kill anyway, right? It's not like it's really gonna, you know, it's not like it's really gonna cost us any, any time. You know what I mean? Now, do I kill this guy properly or do I just one-shot him with magic? You know what, I think we're gonna one-shot him. Yeah. Do, 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 do. <clears throat> hey, there's a reason I get promoted after this mission, okay? Uh, it's 
like we are just way too strong right now for the story. That's kind of that's kind of the problem with Crisis Core when you do missions early. Because of the fact you can unlock, you know, some really, really high-end and difficult missions so early. Because those missions are so hard and so difficult, they actually, they obviously have rewards that warrant that difficulty. So it's like we end up getting super, super broken just so easily. And then obviously because of that, you know, we don't really... We don't really have any difficulty in the overall story. Because, I mean, even even the final chapter of the game, like the final story chapter of the game, even that is really not very difficult at all. It's like, to go, to go through it normally, it's like, eh. You know what I mean? It's like, even if we did no missions at all, just the general, the general story section of Crisis Core is pretty, pretty easy, to be honest. It's like all the all the difficulty comes from the actual uh, missions, but then it was a PSP game, so realistically, what can what can we really expect? You know, like what what can we really expect? Because obviously, PSP games are limited on space, are limited on quality, and all all things like that. So they couldn't really they couldn't really go too far out of the way. Plus the the overall control scheme. For the PSP was not that amazing either. It's like if you don't know, you couldn't really actually, you couldn't even actually control your camera on the original PSP Crisis Core. Obviously, now you can though. Yeah, his parents are dead. We know. It's like poor Genesis's parents. We're just gonna have so many cutscenes in this chapter though. That's kind of the thing with early game stuff though, I suppose, really, isn't it? Like, it's not only it's not only Crisis Core that does that. Pretty much all games, early on, they are extraordinarily, you know, cutscene heavy. And then once you get to sort of like the middle or the last quarter, like a lot of the a lot of the stuff is more more split up. You know, like there's a lot less story cutscene involvement, and it is more gameplay with shorter cutscenes thrown in. Well, unless you're playing something like uh, Trails of Cold Steel. Anyway, that's just story heavy all the way through. Or maybe something like, oh, I'll tell you what, let's let's really test everybody right now. Who has heard of a game called Tears to Tiara? So that's Tears to Tiara 2. Well, specifically the second one. I never played the first one myself. I couldn't get it. I think the first one was Japanese only, actually. But yeah, who's, who's played a game like that? I know a couple from the community have. But I don't really know just how many. But I suppose you've also got games like um, the Agorist franchise. And speaking speaking of Agorist, uh, if you guys didn't know, they're actually bringing a new Agorist game out. Well, technically it's not new. Oh yeah, th this is the live stream, by the way. We need to inspect all of these. We can do a couple right now, and then there's one more a little bit later. We have to inspect all of these right now, okay? Make sure you inspect them all by running over them and obviously, you know, hitting the uh, hitting the X button. We have to do this for a mini game later. As long as you know Zach speaks, then you're fine for it, basically. But uh, yeah, as uh, as I was saying, so there is actually a new Agorist game coming out, but it's not a new new one. They're actually doing a, a remaster for Agorist Generations of War. And they're bringing it out on the Nintendo Switch. It's obviously going to come with, you know, all the all the DLC from the original release and, and all that. Um, and I do believe it is being upscaled as well. But I tell you what, I cannot wait for that. I am, like, I am dying. Like, literally dying for the revival of a new Agorist. It's like, honestly, as long as, as, long as this Agorist game does well, like the, the remake slash remaster on the Nintendo Switch that they bring out. As long as this does well, that might open the door to uh, to another Agorist title. It's like, any, I feel like anybody who has played the Agorist games, they are now so uncontrollably emotional and happy, it is unreal. And for those who haven't played it, they're just like, what the fuck is Agorist, dude? <laughs> Look, here's, here's the thing, right? You can get it on, like, PC, PS3, um... I think those are the only consoles you can get it on. Maybe maybe the Xbox as well, I'm not sure. 
Um, but I would definitely, definitely strongly suggest uh, picking it up if you can. Okay, try try getting it on the PC because that obviously comes with all the all the DLC. But if you if you like uh, RPGs and that, or you like using a bit of strategy in games, or you just like really good stories, then absolutely check them out if you can. The games are like ten quid on Steam. Honestly, just treat treat yourself to Christmas. You know, it's like ten quid for like a ninety hour game is hella worth it. It is absolutely hella worth it. If you do want to pick them up, though, the order I would suggest is, well, the order the games were released in was Generations of War, Generations of War Zero, and then the third game was Agorist 2. So, Agorist Generations of War 2. Honestly, I would probably say skip 2. Like, just skip Agorist Generations of War 2 until you have played the first and Zero. If you like both of the originals, then go for 2. But if you don't like the original two games, then just, just skip Agoras 2. It's definitely a little bit worse, in my opinion. The story is a little bit better, but the gameplay is a bit worse. But yeah, I strongly, I strongly suggest trying out Generations of War or Generations of War Zero. You don't have to play them in order or anything like that. The stories are, like, separated. They are related, but not in a way that would bother you if you didn't play one or the other, you know what I mean? Like, they aren't, they aren't connected in that sense. It's just Agarest uh, Generations of War Zero is set, you know, like thousands of years before Generations of War. It sort of teaches you, you know, slightly why things are happening and how some of the characters came to be, basically. So I suppose in that sense, it is kind of the same. You know, like, it does have some characters from the uh, the original in there it's sort of like their origin story if you get what i mean but it's strongly it's strongly recommended to play it they are amazing games and let's say you can pick them up on steam for like 10 quid and they are literally like 80 90 hour games if you just do the story if you want to do all the post game stuff as well which they have like super super good involvement with then you're probably looking at honestly like 150 to 200 hours gameplay which for ten pound, you really, you really can't go wrong. You really, really cannot go wrong. So again, I would, I would strongly suggest picking it up. Such a good game. In fact, maybe, maybe I'll do a YouTube series for it. I don't know. Like it's one, of, it's one of those games that would be. It would be a little bit difficult to do a series for, just because of the way the games are. But. Maybe, maybe we could. Hmm. Might be, might be something we do in the future, maybe. Yeah, we might, we might do it in the future. Ooh, nice, that is sword leveled. Okay, so, enough about Agarest anyway. You know how I was telling you guys just about the, uh, the live streams? Make sure you pick the first three up right now. There's one near the house, one near the wild, and one near Angeal's house. You need to get those three. There are two more coming up. And we need to get all five live streams before we go to the factory, okay? The factory is a cutoff point for interacting with these. Obviously, as you can see, they are not glowing anymore. That's because I've already interacted with these three. The next two are the same. We'll have to interact with them. They'll stop glowing. And then we go to the factory. But here's the, uh, here's the fourth right now. Once we finally get through the battles. Honestly, I probably could make this a little quicker by just skipping them, but yeah, we don't really we don't really need to. Right now we're gonna go all the way. Also, fun fact: if you go along the left path, uh, Seng will actually moan at you for you know ignoring him and basically doing you know whatever whatever you want, pretty much. And he is the last live stream little orb. So those are all five locations for the live stream. You aren't going to get the trophy just yet. You need to interact with them now, though, so they are interactable later. If you don't interact with them now, you can't do anything with them later. And once you collect all five later, that's where you get the uh, the reward, basically, and the trophy. So now that we've done all that, we've got the items, we've got the treasures, we've interacted with the live streams. We can do the cutscene here with Seng to enter the factory, where there will be a couple more... Uh, like treasures and then we're basically nearly done 
with Benora at this point. We are going to have a mini game. Well, technically we're going to have two mini games though. Both of them are related to trophies. So the first mini game we're going to have is the cannon shells mini game. This is basically where we get shot by 10 rockets. Okay. We need to slash those rockets in order to basically increase a time limit. The more time limit we have, we have to run around collecting those live stream orbs again. And then obviously, you know, we need to advance the story in that time limit as well. The problem is the cannon shells can be a little bit difficult to time. It's like we're gonna we're gonna make a save in this factory though, just in case you might you might miss a cannon shell because the last one is super annoying. You don't actually get to see the last one coming. You have to do it basically on sound alone. And even then, like it can be it can be a little finicky. It's like I think on my first run through, I had to do it twice, maybe. I can't remember if I got lucky and did it first go or if I had to do the uh, the minigame twice. Actually, can't remember that one, but it's fine. There are there are a ton of tricks we can do for that anyway for that mini game, and then after that, once we have the time limit on, we need to just run around the uh, the area interacting with the five live stream orbs. Once we collect those five orbs, we get another trophy for collecting them. And I probably should mention the first trophy is for you know shooting uh, destroying all ten missiles that are fired at you. So you can actually get two trophies right here. You're not going to see them pop for me, though, because I do actually uh, already have them. It's like, I'm not going to go down the list of trophies, though, because there are some that are spoilers. So, yeah. It's like, I think the only trophy you guys might see pop up in this run is... It's probably... Well, obviously, we're going to see the Platinum pop up and all that, because I will be using this playthrough to get my Platinum trophy. But minigame-wise, I think there's only, like, one minigame trophy that I haven't actually got at this point. So you'll see that uh, you'll see that later in. I want to say chapter four, no chapter five, chapter four or chapter five, one of one of the two. It's basically just one of the mini games in the uh, in the slums. So like I did the well in my original playthrough, I did the mini game to get the uh, reward for Aerith. Like I got her trophy, basically her affection trophy, but then I never actually did the minigame trophy itself. It's like, it was just, look, it was bad on my part, okay? It was bad on my part. <laughs> oh, it's fine, though, it's fine. It's not the end of the world. This is where the copies are made. Go upstairs. Genesis may be there. I don't want to go upstairs. Man, why do I always have to do what he wants? Why can't, why can't I just do what I want? Oh, and you know, I just realized I missed a chest in Angeal's house, didn't I? Or did I, did I open the chest with five gil? I can't remember if I did. Infinite in mystery. I wanna, I wanna say I did. I'm almost positive I did. We seek it thus and take or did I skip it? Hmm. I don't know. Either way, there's a, tro there's a treasure chest in Angeal's house with five gil. I wanna, I wanna say I got it. Hello, Genesis. How you doing, buddy? Settle down, Zach the puppy. <laughs> the grave at the house. We found the remains of our people there as well. It didn't take much to have them send false reports. Just some mild threats. <clears throat> they would have done that anyway. At least your parents would have. My parents betrayed me. They had always betrayed me from the very beginning. What do you know? Shiver left all skill. Welcome, partner. 
I like how they're just casually talking while Senga's actually just like kind of burning alive. You finally made your decision. Always found that a little funny for sure. Wishes, old friend. However, can you really live on that side? Angeal! Right, okay, so now after that little cutscene, this is essentially now the uh, the cutoff point for the mini games. So what I would suggest doing is make a save, do, like just in case you uh, you mess up. So we're just going to save there casually, and then we're going to actually go through and leave the, uh, the factory. We are going to have to do a little fight first, and there are going to be some treasure chests outside. So what you can do is you can either save right this instant, or... You could, like, do the fight, open the door, get the treasure chest, and then go and save. It's like, I'm probably going to get the treasure chest and then go save again anyway. So then all we have to do at that point is the uh, the cannon shells minigame. Just because I, I don't trust myself. I don't know if I'll be able to do it first go. He totally missed them, by the way. I think you need target practice, man. Yeah, there's no point searching. They've already left. Can't leave any evidence. An airstrike has been called. Yeah, let's just bomb everything. Why not, right? It doesn't matter that this is like a normal village. You know, I have to admit, though, I wonder where in the FF7 world Benora actually is. Like, where, whereabouts in the FF7 world is Benora located? Because obviously, it gets destroyed here in Crisis Core, and there's no mention of it at all in, like, the original FF7. So, just where exactly is it? It's like, I kind of... I kind of think it's probably going to be semi-close to Midgar and Calm, maybe. I don't think it's going to be towards Junin or on one of the other sides of the... Uh, like, one of the other continents. I don't think it will, anyway. Alright, so never mind, I can't get back in and save. Oh, well, we got the treasure chest, so let's go. Kind of mini-game time. This is where things are going to suck. I just really hope I get it first go. If not, we're gonna have to load an auto save. Genesis has begun shelling the town. Oh man, what do we do now? Use timely sword strikes to destroy shells. Here we go. Yeah, just like hit the missile with your sword, dude. What what's the worst that could happen, right? Are you ready? Tell you what, you hit a missile with a sword that's flying at you, it's totally gonna blow up. There's no way this actually works in real life. Right. One of the things I'm gonna give as a tip for this, by the way, is it's kind of like Final Fantasy IX Jump Rope. You have an easier time with this minigame if you close your eyes and just listen for the sound, okay? All right, here we go. Let's get comfy, and hopefully we'll do it first time. If not, I'm gonna cry. All right, here we go. Also, one of the tips I can give for the first nine is you see the patch of grass in front of Zack. If you slash when the shell gets sort of just above that, that also works for the first nine. Come on, five down, five to go. I hate the way the camera moves on these. Really hate the way the camera moves. Like, it's so disorienting. All right, last one. And I got it. First go. Nice. Yeah, the last one's always the hardest. What I try and do is, once the camera angle sort of gets to Zack's foot, that's when I slash for the 10th. And hey, it worked for me. Alright, so now that we've done that, we have the full time limit available for collecting the, uh, the five live streams. So, that's basically what we're going to do. We're going to rush through getting all five of them. And there's the uh, the little thingy there. If you check Benora's hidden items again along the way, you'll get those unique items. So now we just have to go to the five live stream locations. So there's one there. 
So, do, like, Zach will say he picks them up after. I missed a treasure chest. I'm going to have to grab that. Uh, Zach does say he uh, he will pick them up later. As long as you interact with them, after this minigame is over, you will get the items. So, don't worry about it. Let's get that so we don't miss it. It's like 45 seconds might not seem like a lot of time, but it's it's plenty. It's absolutely plenty of time. Right, so there's another one. There's another one. And then last one is just up here again. That's why we had to interact with them earlier as well. It's like if we didn't interact with the live stream earlier before the factory, we would not be able to interact with them here. So, for example, if I didn't interact with the one next to Angel's house, then I wouldn't be able to collect that item right here. One of the good things, though, is that's actually going to give us a Phoenix Down. The other items are kind of bad, to be honest, but the Phoenix Down is obviously really, really nice. But we are going to have a boss battle in a minute as well. Unfortunately for the boss, it's not going to be that difficult. Perfect bonus, 500 gil, there we go. And there's the items we got. We only really care about the Phoenix Down there, though. The others are kind of meh. What I will say, by the way, is you should probably save your game before going into uh, into Angel's house. I, I I already know I'm ridiculously overpowered for this point of the game, so there's no there's no point at all in me saving because we're still going to one shot the upcoming boss. The if you don't do missions though, then definitely definitely save so that you don't have to do the cannon shell mini game and you don't have to you know collect the live stream orbs again. Killing his own mother, man. Tot tot. What's going on here? I told you. You can't live on that side anymore. You know, I do wish we had more Genesis information. I know we kind of have a little bit about him in um, the Age of Cerberus as well, but I really wish we had more info. Kind of hope that in the uh, the FF7 remake. I'm really, really hoping that we'll actually have some more Genesis storyline. No matter where the winds may blow. I don't see Sephiroth today, but are you game? Like I need Sephiroth to help me, dude. I'm gonna crush this guy. Like, that's going to be difficult. It's like, we're going to crush this guy, man. Yeah, let's just electrocute him. <laughs> like, that was difficult. Yeah, we've done missions, so... It's not going to be hard. Even if we did it on, um... Hard mode, we'd still probably kill him in two electrocutes, to be honest. It's like, the fact is, because we've done so many missions now... And we have such good materia. There's literally nothing in the story that can stop us. Oh, he's mad. We are monsters. I'd love to know how the Bahamut materia gets from Zack's possession, though, to the Temple of the Ancients in the OG FF7. I'd, I'd honestly love to know how that happens. Doesn't mean monster. <laughs> Does if you can survive a bombardment like that. Alright, and there we go. Chapter 2 is now complete, so we're moving on to chapter 3. And this is where we're going to do things a little bit different, okay? So, normally... What I would do is I would, you know, unlock uh, all the missions and then I would start doing the missions. We're not actually going to do that just yet. What we're going to do instead is we're going to unlock all the missions. We're going to do all the optional stuff. 
but we're not actually going to do the missions right away, okay? The main reason for that is we're going to do them later once we actually get to where... Um, uh, oh, what do you call it? Actually, wait, no, I think we have to do the, the soldier missions. Yeah, we have to do the soldier missions, don't we? It's like, I was going to say we can just do them later in Mako Reactor 5. Because that way we can pretty much just do all the missions at once. It's fine, though. It'll only take a bit of time to do some of the missions that we need to. We also need to do Hojo's experiments as well. It doesn't matter where they went. Zach here. It's been a while, Zach. Sephiroth. Come to Lazar's room. Uh, all right. All right, okay. So now in the soldier floor, at the very start, obviously we unlock a, a bunch of missions. Again, we're not really gonna bother with them just yet. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to go straight to the uh, the briefing room first and foremost. Obviously, it is a new chapter, so we are going to interact with the uh, the locker. Every new chapter, you should interact with the locker for a new item. It's not going to be anything good. We're only going to get a star pendant, which, you know, obviously we already have because we did the uh, the missions before. But hey, you might as well, right? And then we're also going to speak to the... Uh, the sol whoops, wrong one. We need to speak to the soldier third class who's sort of getting grilled right now. This guy is going to unlock mission 7-1-1. And then once we complete that series of missions, we can speak to him again for another set of rewards. And that's actually what we're going to do pretty much straight away. We're going to do the uh, the 7 one, one missions. And then we're going to go speak to him, pretty much. It's like we need to do this for a later chapter as well, I should say. So like the reason we have to do this is the reward for these missions we are going to need later in chapter 7 for a uh, an optional quest there. So like unfortunately though we're not really going to get any uh, any actual you know good items or anything like that for us to use. At least I don't think we will anyway. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to think what the mission rewards are. Uh no, I don't think I don't think we actually get anything good for these missions. Yeah, I'll show I'll show him how to do it, man. I'll show him how to do it. Yeah, so we're gonna go do this mission chain right now, just so we can speak to him and get it uh, done with and out of the way. So we're gonna start on seven one one, work our way through, do all the way up to seven one six, and then we're gonna go speak to uh, that soldier again to get the reward. And again, his reward is going to be needed for a later chapter. It's going to be needed for a side quest in a later chapter, which is also related to a trophy as well. So make sure make sure you do it, okay? Thing is, though, these missions now are just going to be over instantly. Pretty much all of them result in us either fighting Machina. Oh, uh, Machina, what am I playing? FF10 here? They're pretty much all basically just machines. Although, what I'm going to say is, uh, sorry for anybody watching, uh, we are just going to skip the dialogue with this guy, unfortunately. There's nothing There's nothing really interesting in it, it's literally just him being a coward, basically. So there's nothing exciting in them or anything like that. That and pretty much every, like, mission in that, the dialogue is basically the same. It's like, Zach's just along the lines of, hey, you finally gonna do a mission yourself? And he's just like, eh, no, no, probably, probably not, to be honest. So it does get a little tedious after a while. I have to admit that I can't wait till we get our soldier promotion, just so I can start regaining MP after these fights. Because then we can just start running around spamming, you know, try fun to go and electrocute every fight. Or we could start spamming jump as well. Although, now that we're actually back to missions, 
I do need to wear... Um, in fact, I suppose I will show these. But yeah, I do need to change my accessories back with missions. It's like, the strength is fine. I don't really, I don't really necessarily need to change them back. We're still more than strong enough for them. But it's more for the, uh, the later missions. Just so that I don't forget to do it in the future, pretty much. Much, much easier to do it right now, anyway. Before I forget. It's like, anybody who's not new to the channel, yeah, chances are you know just how bad my memory actually is. Anyone who is new to the channel, well, chances are you've probably already seen how bad my memory is. <laughs> Look, I am, I am the sort of guy, okay, who... I will say I'm going to do something, like, let's say just how I said I'm going to change the accessories. Like, in that short amount of time, there is a very high chance I literally could have just forgot to do that. In fact, let's throw the Mog's Amulet on just so we get rare drops. It's like, we might as, we might as well. It's like, we're going to get extra accessory slots soon anyway. Which I think, to be honest, I might just push through for instead of doing things in, like, the end of this chapter. I might just push through to the next chapter before we really do all our missions. Then again, no, because I do, I do want to do it early, maybe. Yeah, we'll do it, we'll do it early. It's fine. It's like it would make things a little bit easier if I just waited until, like, the next chapter, but it's not going to be, it's not going to make or break anything, you know what I mean? It basically just, it basically just lets us use the Mog's amulet, you know, so we can get the rare drops pretty much straight away. That's kind of all it's going to let us do. Well, I suppose, really, I could get a bit more health and MP as well from the extra accessory slots. Yeah, no, I'm incredible. Like, I'm, I'm amazing, man. What can I say? I'm amazing, you know? What about the next mission? Yes, the next mission. I'll be doing it myself. <laughs> yeah, sure you will. Mm-hmm. Kind of you know, he's literally just pushing his workload over onto Zack right now. Well, now you're me it's like he's the one getting all the level ups, and yet Zack's doing all the work. I feel I feel cheated right now, man. I feel cheated. Yeah, you see what I mean? Like these these cutscenes with this soldier, they're just kinda eh. There's really there's really nothing special about them or anything. Alright, 7, 1, 4. At least we're nearly there. We just have three more to go. And luckily enough, this one's a really short stage as well. We just have to run to the left first for the treasure chest. Probably one of the uh, the treasure chests that most people forget about in these stages. It's like one, one good tip I can always give when it comes to missions is no matter where you start, check the map first and always look behind you for treasure chests. It only takes a few seconds to do, and it also means that on stages where the treasure chest is behind you, you're not running all the way over to the end of the stage, only to run all the way back because you missed a treasure chest. You know what I mean? I'm actually amazed he survived that then as well. Yeah, always, always look behind you first, just to ensure you actually, uh, you actually get everything. It's amazing his voice changes every mission as well. He wishes. He wishes. Are you really the same guy? <laughs> no, he's obviously not. Listen to his voice. See you later. Yeah. It's like everyone's just pushing their work off onto Zack right now. Alright, another mission. There's two more to go and then we can speak to him again and we can also continue on with uh, with the story. We can get our soldier promotion. Then we kind of have to sha it, shave. We have to save Shinra HQ after that as well, and then from there, well, we can basically just do missions for the next twenty hours. It's like this is actually we're actually coming up to the point now where we can just go through and do literally everything now, pretty much. It's like at the end of this chapter, we're gonna unlock uh, a mission. 
with the... I want to say it's like 8-4 something. It's either 8-3 something or 8-4 something. And then once we do that, we can actually just go through the entire mission chain to unlock Maneuver. So we can get like pretty much any material in the game. We can get all the accessories, well, all the good accessories anyway, and so on and so forth. So this, uh, this chapter is going to be a fun one. It's also going to be a long one. But as I say, like, this is also one of those chapters where if you want to, you can just skip to, uh, to chapter 4. And the main reason for that is at the start... Wait, no, not chapter 4. Chapter... Four, yeah, chapter 4. But basically, at the start of the next chapter, you unlock a couple more missions where you can unlock your third and fourth accessory slot. So then you'll have your third and fourth accessory slot. You'll also gain item fusion, which is just like infinitely, infinitely easier to max out your stats with. So like you can, you can do it in this chapter. You can max out your stats in this chapter, no problem. It is just way, way slower. Because it basically, it basically involves abusing darkness materia. So you basically have to, you basically have to farm darkness materia for like an hour per stat. So let's say, let's say you want to max out strength. Okay, you want to max out your strength stat to 100 on a materia. If you do it in this chapter, that entire process is basically an hour of farming materia for the stat. And then another hour farming materia for the SP required to fuse it. So it takes it takes a while, you know. That's why I kind of prefer doing it in the uh, the next chapter, simply due to the fact that then you only need to farm the initial SP required, and some treasure chests in that chapter as well will give you just huge huge amounts of of SP. So you will actually be required to farm less SP for the fusion, but then you can also use items as well. So you could do just like. Um, you know, chocobo feathers for your uh, your HP and so on and so forth. So it just makes it way faster to actually hit max stats. But again, that's down to the uh, that's down to the person anyway. I will be showing off you know some of the some of the stat maxing in this uh, chapter. Like I'll show you how to max your health and, and things like that. Because let's be honest, health is definitely the most important stat that you want to max this early. Other than that, uh, we'll also be doing. Uh, some vitality and spirit as well just to help with our general survivability with the uh, the eight missions But again, it is going to result in hours of farming which you can you can just save by doing it in the next chapter instead But that's entirely up to you do it in do it in whichever chapter you would want if you want to do it as early as possible It's gonna have to be this chapter. I'm afraid which unfortunately for you, well, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna suck for you. Right, so now we've done that, we can report to the soldier and we can get the premium tires. As I mentioned, this is going to be required for a later chapter. It's going to be a quest in chapter eight, chapter seven or chapter eight. Coward. I heard you're quitting, soldier. Yes. I'm sorry for everything. Did you find out? The most important thing for soldier? No. I never did. But I know what kept me going until today. I wanted to become a great operative like Zack one day. That was the dream that kept me going. I was a rookie. My mentor always told me, embrace your dreams. Dreams? My mentor, like Zack, used to help me on my missions. Wait a minute. Could your mentor be... Yeah, it was in jail. The important thing about being a soldier is to embrace your dreams. My mentor taught me that. Or is it Genesis? Oh. In jail or Genesis, it's one of the two. Alright, there's the premium tires. 
So now that we got that, we can move on now. We will be coming back to the Shinra building in a little bit, but for now, we're just going to go to the elevator first. Have a small cutscene with Quinzel, and then it's time to go to town. It's like we're going to unlock a, another mission. We're going to speak to a few NPCs for, uh, for males. And then we're also going to unlock a second mission as well. Once we've done that, we're literally just going to come straight back to the, uh, the Shinra building. We'll take part in Hojo's experiments, which really isn't that difficult, to be honest. And then we'll uh, basically carry on with the story until we get to Mako Reactor 5. So that's when that's when we're gonna do all of the uh, the missions available, basically. All right, let's go, shall we? In fact, do I need to get a new raise status? Uh, no, I do not. I already have raise, so that is fine. Okay, let's go to Loveless Avenue, shall we? So straight off the bat, we're going to uh, speak to the free fans again. We need to do this for the uh, the fan mail later on. So like, this is also related for a trophy. Yeah, we know Sephiroth, yada yada yada. Yeah, you fans carry on just fine. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're still actually going to go around this way because we're going to unlock a new mission. And he's just at the top of these stairs. Once we've done that, we're going to go to the next zone, unlock another mission, and also get another male. And then we're pretty much done. It's like we'll just start with the uh, the story then. He's totally an avalanche. And this that which ills the planet. <laughs> Good story, bro. Here, go ahead. They totally missed a chance there. That should have been the cool story, bro meme. Right, there's his mission unlocked, so now we can go back downstairs. Since we can't go to the uh uh sexified slums just yet, so there's no point going towards the uh, the train station or anything. So we're just gonna go to Lovelace Avenue. So the employer that we're going to speak to here, again, these missions are required for uh, for something special later on. So these ones do have to be done, and I should probably say these are missable as well. So the actual um, the actual question here, it doesn't matter what you choose. You can choose either one, uh, and then she'll still give you the mission, basically. I do believe she's on about Joe, though, the, uh, the FF7 Chocobo Racer. Because he's the only one that has a black chocobo. I'm aware, anyway. I can't think of anyone else with one. And, of course, we're going to speak to the other Genesis fan as well for another male. And now with that, we are completely done here. So, we can now go back to Shinra HQ, which is exactly where we're going. We're going to go to the training room. And then we're going to do uh, Hojo's experiments. Get those fights done and out the way. It's going to be over super, super instantly. And then we can go get our promotion. Where we will also uh, end up getting our Materia Fusion, SP Converse, and the extra two Materia slots as well. And that's when... <laughs> that's when we can really break the game, that is. It's like, I know that's what you guys are all waiting for. You're just waiting on the Materia. Yeah, screw you, buddy. I'm going in. Yeah, I'm going in. Which yeah, I know, I know you guys are all just dying for the materia fusion stuff. Don't worry, it'll be it'll be coming soon. Dude, just do what he says. Yeah, that's fine. All right, I'll show you what soldier can do. So now it's literally just a case of like four fights. Super, super simple, super easy. Like this is this is easy even if you don't do uh, missions. 
It's basically just a couple of the fights from earlier on. It's like these are only fights you've already done, basically. So yeah, we're just gonna murder them. One quick shot of Trifundiga and it's done. No, this can't be. No, the settings were fine, Hojo. New bat. Well, one down, three to go. Say again. Oh, nothing. Now, let's begin. Kind of a shame we can't actually fight Orojo in this game. I would, I would love to really put him in his place. You know what I mean? Yeah, as you can see, like just, just from the fact we've done missions, these, these fights are nothing. No, the settings were fine. You're just bad, dude. Fun fact as well, by the way, it's like with the way Hojo is talking here, it's almost like we've already had our promotion, but we haven't. We're only second class still. Wait, how did I miss him there? He dodged me, man. Oh, another status ward level up. Very nice. It's like, ideally, I really want that to be level 5 before we actually get to the missions where it's going to be really, really handy. Although, then again, I suppose it doesn't really matter. Like, we'll get it eventually anyway. That and three stars is, is pretty good in general. Really? How nice. Yeah, sure, I'll fire it. Some data I designed on a lock. That... Professor Hojo, not that one. It's not dangerous, man. These scientists, dude, I tell you. Good old experiment 88. Yeah, I'll still have a go for it. It's easy. It's only going to be a behemoth. You need not worry. I will see to it that your remains contribute greatly to science. Now, my precious virtual data. Prove my greatness to the entire world. Alright, let's go. Shame he's weak to lightning. <laughs> See, you don't even need to pay attention to it. Electrocute does the job for you. It wasn't that unexpected. Right, so now that we've done that, we can go ahead and uh, head to the soldier director's office now to get our promotion. Which, needless to say, is exactly what we are going to do. It's like we're completely done in the uh, Hojo's room now anyway. Just a shame we don't really get anything good for that. Oh well, it is what it is. Now, all we have to do now is get the soldier promotion and then continue on with this chapter. And then once we get to the Mako reactor, we can actually do basically everything there. So, we're going to save. But, I'm afraid to say, guys, we are going to be ending this video right here. Still, though, I hope you have enjoyed it and I hope it has helped. If it has, then please be sure to smash that like button. And, of course, drop a comment down below as well. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any more content. As always, though, everybody... Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.